How? Why? Welcome to Ranger Reviews, a web series where we look at episodes of the TV show Power Rangers and then discuss them. Today we're exploring the 12th episode of the show Power Rangers Turbo, as well as the 217th episode overall titled Alarmed and Dangerous. We begin this episode at Angel Grove High where Kat is assisting Miss Appleby, passing out test booklets to a class. Justin is there taking a test, and he gets asked by some bully to turn his paper to the left. We find out this unfortunate haircut's name is Reggie, and he's some other guy flips Justin's hair, which makes Justin yell at him, so all three of them get kicked out of the hall by Miss Appleby. What a bitch. They're in the hallway and the other guy's name is Junior, apparently. It's a terrible name. Then Reggie holds up Justin, telling him that he's going to make his fist study Justin's face. These dudes are definitely like 24. Suddenly an alarm starts to ring and Miss Appleby and Kat have to get everyone out. And Kat goes looking for Justin, walking around the hallway. She finds Justin and he says that the other dudes went ahead. We see that the firemen are there, which by the way, that's an insane response time. They say that it's a false alarm and apparently somebody wanted to get out of school early. There's no way in hell they could tell that right away, right? Justin says, yeah, and Miss Appleby immediately asks if he knows something about this, and after he's mansplained to about how false alarms are bad, he explains that Reggie and Junior did it. Kat says that Justin did the right thing by telling the truth, and they walk away. And we see that Deep Talks is peeking at them via the periscope. In the ship, she realizes she should use false alarms for her own good, and everyone agrees around her. She's sending down some piranhas to take on the rangers while the alarms go off so they won't be able to find the bomb. At the youth center, Adam and Tanya are practicing, and Tommy's there, going hard. They tell him to chill out, but then the alarms go off, and Stone tells everyone to evacuate, but then the alarms stop, so he leaves the monkeys with the ranger teens while he goes checking out what's going on. At school, Reggie and Junior find Justin, blaming him for them now getting detention. And they want to beat the crap out of him. These guys are some of the worst actors ever on Power Rangers. Then Justin reaches into his back pocket, taking out his turbo key, clearly thinking about morphing. Then the alarms go off, and Cat walks up. Miss Appleby then dismisses everyone for the day, saying that they can't figure out what's going on with the alarms. Everyone leaves. At the juice bar, Adam, Tanya, and Tommy are watching Bulk and Skull, talking about how human these monkeys are, and how they've been trying to tell them something. Then Tanya says that she knows what they're looking for, and she pays them money. Stone shows up saying he couldn't find anything that's wrong with the alarms, and he takes the cash from the monkeys. Then Elgar uses the periscope through a bucket behind them, and the monkeys find it, playing with the periscope. Then they hit Elgar underwater, knocking him out. Alright. Stone talks to the ranger teens about how it was a false alarm, and then the alarms go off again, and the monkeys toss the water bucket on Stone, okay, because he said to treat every alarm as if it were a real thing. None of these jokes are landing. Then Tommy starts to suspect that Divatox has something to do with these false alarms, and Adam says how it's not really her style, and Tanya says Divatox doesn't really have any style. Dude, her entire style is bombs. They leave to check it out. I don't know how they would do that, but whatever. Underwater, Elgar is now using a sword against the periscope, but Divatox tells him to stop fooling around. She has a new detonator that's shaped like a fire extinguisher. She gives it to Elgar and Rygog, telling them to go hide it in Angel Grove. At a park near a pond, Justin and Kat are walking, and Justin explains that he's going to have to defend himself if Reggie and Junior try to fight him. And Kat suggests that he could just, you know, try to start over with them and become friends with Reggie. Yeah, like, that's nice and all, Kat, but that's super unrealistic. There are two Piranatrons there, and they're making an alarm go off right in front of Cat and Justin. The literal two Piranatrons attack Cat and Justin, and this is really underwhelming because somehow Cat can't even defend herself against a single Piranatron now, while Justin actually does a damn flip and takes one out easily. Cat is officially worse than a 12-year-old child. They turn off the alarm and head out for the power chamber. Then the firemen show up and the alarm is going off again. Elgar and Rygog show up and they plant the detonator on the fire truck. They disappear before the firemen show up again, getting back in the fire truck, leaving with the bomb in tow. At the power chamber, all the rangers are together trying to figure out why Divatox would even want to do this. And Demetria suggests that it's so that they're constantly distracted. They decide to split up to cover more ground to find a bomb. Alpha will be watching from the power chamber. In the park, Justin says, screw looking for that, I guess. Putting down his bag and sitting down. Then Reggie and Junior are there too, and they start tormenting Justin right away. Then Justin says that he doesn't want to have to do this, running away over the tables, but then Reggie pushes him down, and then he tries to punch Justin, but Justin gets it around on him, getting ready to punch Reggie, but then he runs away with his backpack. Imagine being a 17-year-old about to get hit by a 12-year-old. Reggie and Junior lose Justin, who is in a tree hiding from them. They keep looking for him, but they can't find him anywhere. Then Justin tries to climb around for whatever reason, and Reggie seems to figure out that Justin's in the tree, but then Justin's foot breaks a branch, and he starts to fall, so he teleports away. Reggie and Junior look, and they see nothing. Justin teleports into the power chamber, landing hard. That was actually kind of funny. Kat is there because she found a detonator signal. She asks why Justin's there, and Justin tells her about what he had to do, and Kat is like pissed because he's using his powers in front of them. Kat, what do you want? And Justin says he can't get through to them, and Kat says he's too smart not to figure this out. Newsflash, sometimes people just suck, and that's it. 
Alpha says he's going to throw up if they don't stop being cheesy, and then he explains that the bomb is moving all over the damn city by itself somehow. Deep Talks checks in on our bomb, telling Porto, Elgar, and Rygog to get up to the surface level right away. They teleport out. Deep Talks then says to count down from 11, and the rangers finally see that the bomb is on the fire truck. Cat tells Alpha to have the others meet them there. Shift into turbo. Blue and pink meet up with yellow, red, and green, and they all get caught up. Then the bomb just goes off. R.I.P. all those firemen. Just kidding, it somehow just monsterized the uh, fire truck, which is now flying through the city. What is happening? The rangers jump on top of the fire truck, and it starts to get hit by a bunch of things, knocking them all off. Then Rygog, Elgar, and Porto are there, firing at the rangers on the ground, and all the villains just retreat for no reason whatsoever. The truck is coming this way, and the rangers use their auto blasters, somehow hitting it down, and the firemen are fine? What was the point of this fight? Deutox is pissed because they messed up, but like, what kind of detonator was that? They've never turned things into monsters before. Deutox name drops Miranthius because Elgar failed, so she wants to drop him into fire again? Hmm. At school, Justin runs into Reggie, and Reggie tells him he has a five second head start. Reggie then asks if he's going to fight, but Justin refuses. Reggie then asks if he's gonna go tell mommy and daddy, and Justin yells, My parents are around to tell! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, is this how we're gonna do this? Reggie laments how he hasn't seen his dad in two years. They talk about how Justin couldn't tell a lie, and then he wants Reggie to study for the makeup test next week, and Reggie's like, you do that for me? And Justin puts his hand on his shoulder, because that's apparently Justin's thing now, saying, what are friends for? I guess Junior's just gonna show up later and beat the shit out of an unexpecting Justin. The end. Wow, this episode was a steaming pile of crap, but god, if it's not hilarious. All unintentionally. I mean, come on. Justin bonded with his bully about how his parents aren't around and the bully's like, whoa, me too. <laughs> Christ. It's the most convenient plot device to ever happen and honestly, the use of Japanese footage in this episode alone is abysmal. I just want them to breathe a bit on focusing on Justin. They never do anything cool with the concept of having a kid ranger and at this point, they just need to stop. So next time, we're actually introduced to a new character in the show. But until then, may the power protect you.